are the ones who are responsible. Thank you. Um, okay, um, so uh, I'm going to speak about uh, issues related to trustworthy artificial and intelligent systems. So let me start by giving an example of a trustworthy system. Here is a trustworthy system. Because this plane didn't crash, despite the engine which actually exploded uh, in the air. Uh, and all 500 passengers uh, uh, were safe. Of course, it made an emergency landing because it cannot uh, go across the Atlantic uh, with the, in, in such a situation. But the, the plane wasn't disrupted. And therefore, you can fly a plane safely. And safely means that you are trusting the system uh, actually to achieve what you expected to do. And this is what I'm going, my talk is going to revolve about this. And uh, since the beginning of this uh, talk, I pronounced the word system many times. And this is also one uh, takeaway message actually. We should think about AI systems as systems and not about AI software or AI components. Uh, so, as we uh, develop AI-based systems, we are using them in many, many applications. And this is just a list of those applications. Uh, and we want those systems actually to make decisions for us. Uh, but the issues are that some applications are critical and you are not very sure about the safety of those AI systems. Uh, we have some issues related to uh, human rights. For example, you can use AI systems to threaten democracy, as you know, uh, to, so, to uh, uh, have a very mass surveillance uh, of people. Uh, you have fairness issues, etc. So this raises uh, problems related to ethics, and this is why the discussion about ethics is important, because the issue is not just technical, it has social implications. Uh, and there are strong technical challenges uh, for reliability, safety, robustness of those systems. Uh, also, uh, one should keep in mind that when we use data-driven machine learning systems, we are building systems that are not contextual, that lack semantics. And when you use them in different situations, the system, of course, you cannot expect from it to understand the semantics of the application. Uh, now, this is an example of lacking semantics. This is a very well-known example of uh, uh, a mistaken uh, but, but very strongly, uh, uh, how would I say, probable assessment by system. For example, here, this school bus uh, this is a garbage truck, this is a punching bag, and this is a snowball with high probability by the, uh, interpreted by the system. So I'm not going to explain why this uh, interpretation is happening, but of course you can see that there are similarities maybe uh, with uh, 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 databases that the system has learned from and which make it believe uh, with high confidence that uh, a school bus becomes a a garbage truck in a given situation. But simply, I mean, actually, it lacks semantics. It doesn't understand what it's seeing. And, and, and this is a core problem in this, in, in, in this approach. So what we are talking about, and the reason we are talking about ethics, is because we are talking about social technical systems, systems that have strong impact on society on human beings. Uh, therefore, these systems need to comply with human values. Uh, this has been around in the discussion since the beginning. Uh, they must be technically dependable because we want to use them and they must be socially trustworthy. Uh, if you don't trust a device, you don't use it. And if this device uh, doesn't deliver the, the expected uh, service, uh, no one will uh, buy it, and therefore, no one will develop it. So they have to be trustworthy. And 
And therefore, because of this social impact, we need both technical and non-technical frameworks to enable uh, the, this dependability, this social trustworthiness. Uh, Virginia mentioned already the uh, uh, many, many uh, initiatives, and I'm going to uh, focus on two of them, which is the IEEE Global Initiative and the uh, Ethics Guidelines for Trustworthy AI uh, by the European High Level Group on AI. So the IEEE started, uh, Standard Association started in, in uh, 2015, 2016, the official, official launch, this uh, Global Initiative on Ethics of Autonomous and Intelligent Systems, and ethics here is actually because of those concerns uh, that I have raised. And uh, it's worthwhile to uh, actually reflect on the mission of this initiative. It's really to ensure that every stakeholder involved in the design and development of autonomous and intelligent systems is educated, trained, and empowered to prioritize ethical considerations so that these technologies are advanced for the benefit of humanity. And I think the whole conversation today revolves around this, revolves around the fact that uh, globally, uh, the um, uh, uh, stakeholders, the persons, the companies who are involved in developing AI systems are not so much educated, trained to consider ethical uh, issues. And this is the purpose of, of this whole uh, uh, process. Uh, and it's interesting to see that, uh, this is the global view, uh, the ethically aligned design, which is the main output uh, of, of this initiative, the other output is the standards, for example, and the certification program, uh, has three pillars. The first pillar is universal human values. It's the ethical uh, component. Uh, political self-determination and data agency because of the role of data and uh, of the decision-making uh, uh, process. And technical dependability. These are the three pillars. I will not detail uh, what follows from these pillars. General principle about transparency, well-being, human rights, accountability. I'll get back to that very quickly, but the pillars are very important. Uh, and the document, which is available online uh, from here, uh, you uh, can read through it. It's about uh, 300 pages. Uh, it's divided into chapters, and each chapter addresses different uh, issues and proposes recommendations uh, to deal with these issues. And this is updated, and we have another edition coming up uh, uh, next year. Now, very similarly to that, the European High Level Group has produced uh, the other document, which is also uh, online, uh, but I didn't put the address, uh, which has also uh, three pillars, which is lawful AI, ethical AI, robust AI. And you find this issue about robustness, uh, again, in, uh, uh, as, as a main, a main pillar. They translate, and I will get back to that also, uh, through ethical principles into seven key requirements. And when you look to those seven key requirements, you find technical robustness and safety, you find transparency, which is also uh, an important aspect of development of machine learning processes, and the other uh, requirements are less technical. They are less technical, and this is because we need technical and non-technical aspects. So let me start with the technical aspect, which is system dependability. Now, of course, complex systems like an aeroplane, but any system that you use in your daily life. For example, you use electricity in your daily life, and this comes from a power plant, and the power plant is a very complex system. If it's a nuclear power plant, it's even a more complex system, and a dangerous one. So complex systems are built over interacting imperfect components. No component is perfect, of course. Every component can, made, can be made reliable to a point, but you are pretty sure at some point it will fail. And, but the system shouldn't fail, uh, despite the best design. And this is why 
you have to think of the system, which at this system level, you, have, you need this dependability, you need this resilience of the system, not necessarily at the component level. This is why the Airbus flew despite the failure of an engine. And these issues of dependability have been around since many years. Uh, this is from a publication about 20 years ago. Uh, and they have been well, uh, uh, there is a, techno a taxonomy about the dependability, which is represented here. Dependability has a few attributes. The attributes of dep dependability are availability, which means you expect the system to provide the service, a correct service. Uh, reliability, the system has to be continuous over time, for some time. It must be safe, which means no catastrophic consequences. It might, there, there are some issues which are quite interesting actually to look at in the context of uh, uh, current applications. Confidentiality, uh, absence of unauthorized disclosure of information, integrity, no system alteration, maintainability, undergo changes, security. Uh, now, of course, um, what interest me most here is the safety aspects, but not only. Uh, there is another concept, which is resilience, which is the ability of the system actually to cope with uh, unspecified uh, environment changes. Uh, and you have the concept of, of fault tolerance. Now, this, um, to get back to the picture here, uh, those attributes are threatened by something which is called errors, faults, and failures. And the faults are results of errors. And there are physical faults of the system, design faults, and interaction faults when the system interacts with its environment. What we are talking about mostly in the discussion are related to design faults. Because the AI, the learning system, is designed in a way which doesn't make it, by essence, uh, safe enough. And it's faulty. You know it's faulty. You know it will commit mistakes. The example I presented to you in the beginning is uh, just an example of how machine learning systems can be fooled. Uh, and so the, the solution is not to make those systems perfect. They will never be perfect. The solution is to tolerate that they are going to be imperfect. And this is the means to address those threats. You can prevent, but it's not going to happen. You can tolerate, and uh, you can also forecast. And therefore, you can do the necessary processes so that you can expect a fall to happen. You have some indicators of that. Or you can also um, make the system work despite these faults. Um, uh, so, yeah, the uh, um, I speak. I, I, I mentioned this already. So, fault tolerance. How do you address fault tolerance? Well, the purpose is to limit the consequences of a failure. It's not to avoid it. Uh, for this, you have several methods. For example, design diversity. You can have different systems with different designs to do the same thing. But because they have design, been designed differently, they are going to fail differently in different situations. Uh, you uh, uh, detect the erroneous uh, uh, behavior so that it, you can uh, then isolate the, uh, the faulty system so that the error doesn't propagate to other parts of the system. Uh, you make a decision to produce an error-free result. So this is depicted in this more or less simplistic view, but this is the idea. The idea is that you have an architecture of the system. Here you have different components. They can be well be based on machine learning processes, data-driven. Uh, but they have to have different designs, different uh, approaches, uh, but they achieve redundancy and they achieve diversity. And then safety control mechanisms, 
that can be knowledge-based so that you expect in, different, in some situations something to happen. And this is based on, of course, your knowledge about how these systems operate. Uh, but you have an assessment, a control level, you have mechanisms to uh, compare the results to uh, make a decision. And, of course, the system is the, here to do something. It has a purpose, it has a goal, it was designed to do something. And therefore, you have also the other part of AI that we don't speak about much today, which is not necessarily based on learning, but could be, uh, of course, which is more related to deliberation, planning, the uh, goal, the context of the deployment of the system. Now, getting back to the non-technical aspect, uh, the uh, seven requirements identified by the uh, um, high-level group in Europe are listed here, and you, I just discussed about the technical robustness and safety, uh, but you see that there are, for example, issues related to accountability. This is a framework that says uh, that systems should be auditable, that uh, they ha there, are, there should be a forensics, etc. There should be uh, fairness and non-discrimination in the design. There should be issues related to privacy and data governance. This is a framework that addresses the ethical issues and not the technical issues. Uh, those are the technical aspects. I mentioned uh, some of them. And those are the non-technical aspects. Regulation. Codes of conduct in, the, in companies, standardization. I'll give uh, 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 one example, uh, Virginia mentioned. Certification processes, uh, governance framework in companies, and development, education and awareness to foster ethical mindset, stakeholder participation, and that's interesting, diversity and inclusive design teams. This, these are the persons who are going to make the design. If you have diversity and inclusiveness in the design teams, you might be able to better avoid some bias. And standardization plays a very essential role as well as certification. And this is why the IEEE initiative includes this uh, Speed 7000 series uh, of standards, uh, which are not purely technical standards. They are ethical technical standards. Uh, and when you see the list, for example, uh, um, there is a new one, Virginia, by the way. Uh, when you see the list, you see IEEE P7009, Standard for Fail-Safe Design of Autonomous and Semi-Autonomous Systems. This is rather technical, but it includes issues related to ethics. Most of the others, when you look, for example, uh, personal data, uh, the um, uh, nudging, ethically driven nudging, uh, ethical consideration for emulated empathy, all these include ethical uh, concerns. And lastly, uh, the system shouldn't be just designed and deployed. It has a life cycle. And therefore, the whole process should go along the life cycle of the system. Uh, when especially AI systems have sometimes unexpected use. Uh, and therefore, you need to uh, take into account the evolution of those use to redesign, to redeploy, to update, to uh, therefore actually take into account what happens in reality to the system. It's not just deployed once and for all. Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, thank you. Uh, so good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jeff from Tencent Research Institute.